Got the mic? Okay. Good evening. Today we're going to be singing Stand Up for Jesus, 322. We're going to be singing Stand Up for Jesus, number 322. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for these that came out, and thank you for this country. We celebrate Thanksgiving, and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for tonight. Please bless this time that we have out here. Please bless us for the word that we're going to hear. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Good evening. Uh, Talon did a nice job leading tonight, didn't he? So you guys did a good job singing, so... Uh, as he said, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, you're, if you're not aware, uh, Pastor and his family are in Georgia uh, for the next few days, enjoying Thanksgiving with their family. And uh, I believe they were hoping to get some time in with Shannon's grandma. Um, her health is getting uh, progressively worse, so they're uh, wanting to spend some time with her and uh, you know, just the family in general. And I know they usually... Each year they take turns. One one year they'll go at Christmas time, and then next year at Thanksgiving. So this must be the Thanksgiving year. So uh, we're going to try to do things as close to normal as we normally do them tonight. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, prayer requests. Uh, there's bulletins up here on the table. And uh, as somebody pointed out, please uh, ignore the date on the front page. It's not accurate, but uh, rest assured that the... Uh, the rest of the uh, inside is up to date with the correct date on the inside. Um, does anybody need a prayer bulletin? Is there anybody that did not get one? Uh, Talon, would you mind grabbing one for Ken behind you there? Thank you. All right. Uh, does anybody have any new requests or updates to ones that are already on here? Yes. On Monday, is this the one that's been yeah. keeping getting pushed off? And okay, so that'll be this coming Monday. I'm pretty sure it is on here. Oh, did he? Okay, all right. Well, I'll write it back on here. Surgery on Monday. Morning, afternoon. Do you know yet? They'll have to call you and let you know. Okay. All right, so we'll uh, put that on there, and uh, between now and then, make sure uh, uh, you pray for uh, Bob and his surgery coming up. Anybody else have anything else to add? Yes, Sharon. Broke his foot. Your cousin's husband. I'm sorry? Ed Tully. Tully. Okay, so we'll add Ed to the list. Um, Lucy, did I see your hand go up?
Okay, what was his name? Tom McDonald. So, uh, so uh, praying for a recovery for him. Okay. So, so. On Monday. Okay, anybody else tonight? Yes. Yeah, um, the vision came up that Laura could have an expressive speech thing. So I'm just praying that she could allow her vision to get more expressive and she can do it that way on Sunday. And then after I told him, he came up. Any other? Unspokens tonight, Journey and Ken. And any one unspoken for you? Any other unspokens? Yes. I believe they're coming back on Friday. Is that correct? I'm guessing that uh, they'll probably have a, hopefully an uneventful trip. The traffic won't be so bad uh, coming back on Friday. Uh, I was at my parents this afternoon. My mom was saying that all the stores have tons and tons of turkeys left over. Um, just they, and they don't know what to do with them. They're giving them to, you know, shelters and you know, uh, food banks and things like that because of the COVID. So many families are choosing not to get together this year for Thanksgiving. So, you know, they've got all these turkeys that uh, normally would be gone. <laughs> so I'm guessing that traffic probably will be a little lighter than usual. I think they say that usually Thanksgiving is the busiest holiday for travel, typically Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, did I see your hand up, Nick? Oh, Terry, okay. That was Ursula, you said? Yeah. Okay, so uh, are they going to do further tests then to determine exactly what it is, or are they just... Uh, I don't know. I mean, it won't tell me anything because I'm not seeing anything. I have no idea what's going on. Um, I just know that they have to keep Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, definitely uh, pray for her that it's not cancerous, uh, especially if they're not sure they're willing to uh, treat it if it is because of her age. So we will uh, uh, add her to the list for that. Uh, anybody else? Going once, going twice. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for... Uh, Thank you for this day today. Thank you for uh, uh, all that you do for us, for your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for uh, giving our pastor and his family a, a safe trip down to Georgia. Uh, we thank you that they can take some time and get away, uh, and just spend some time with family and kind of relax and uh, uh, unwind for a little bit. Uh, we'd uh, like to also ask that you please uh, be with them when they return home, uh, I believe on Friday. Uh, please watch over them, give them safe travels, pray that traffic wouldn't be too bad, uh, pray that you'd keep the car uh, going well for them, no breakdowns or anything like that. Uh, just watch over them and give them a safe trip. 
Uh, we'd also ask, Father, that you please uh, be with uh, Bob on Monday as he uh, uh, gives another attempt for this surgery. We pray that everything would uh, come together so that he can uh, finally get this uh, surgery underway and get things squared away. I ask that you'd be with the doctors, uh, guide them, direct them, help them to be fully rested and uh, ready to uh, take on the task. I ask that you'd also give them a quick recovery. Uh, we'd also like to ask, Lord, that you would be with Sharon's cousin, Ed Tully, who broke his foot. Uh, please be with him. Uh, also give him a quick and speedy recovery there. Pray that he wouldn't be in too much pain or discomfort and that you would just uh, uh, be with him while that heals. I ask that you be with Tom McDonald and his recovery. Uh, please uh, continue to uh, give him good results uh, as he's uh, starting to... Uh, sounds like slowly show signs of coming out of the coma ask that you just uh, be with him and uh, uh, heal his body uh, please be with Harry Allen as he goes in for uh, surgery uh, excuse me a procedure on Monday um, we ask that you would uh, be with the doctors and the nurses for him as well whatever uh, is taking place we ask that you'd guide their hands uh, be with Harry help him not to be uh, nervous and uh, that everything would go well and the results would come back good for him whatever uh, is taking place. We ask that you be with Josh uh, as he travels on Sunday, heads back uh, uh, back to his uh, base. Ask that you would please uh, watch over and protect him, uh, keep him free from COVID. As you know, uh, that could be a setback for him when he gets back and put him in isolation. And, uh, and we know that's something that he definitely doesn't want to do. So we just ask that you keep him healthy, keep him away from uh, people that might be sick, and just keep him safe as he travels. Uh, please be with Ursula. Uh, this um, recent findings of possible uh, cancer, we ask that you would just uh, please uh, help it to be something else, something that the doctors might be able to help her with. Uh, it seems they're a little concerned with her age that if it is cancer, it might, they might not be able to really do much for her. So we'd ask that you just intervene there and uh, take care of her. Uh, please be with our unspoken requests that we have tonight. Uh, although we don't know what each of these uh, folks has on their heart, you do. And I'm sure that they've already uh, brought these requests to you in prayer. And we would just ask that you would uh, be with Jeanette be with Journey, be with Ken and Talon. Um, I pray that you would uh, hear their requests, Lord, that you would answer them according to your will for their lives and uh, what is best for them. Uh, we thank you again for all those that come out tonight, and uh, we pray that you would just be with the remainder of the service. I uh, pray that it would be a, a blessing to each of us here tonight. You'd speak to our hearts. Um, please be with our quiz and everything that we do here tonight to bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, I will pass this along to the pastor when he gets back so that he can update these uh, for next week's bulletin when they will be back for that. Uh, we are now going to go into our quiz. Um, we don't have a lot of people here tonight, so we could probably get away with one candy hander outer, or if you all want to participate, um, we can do like we did last week when we had the pizza and prayer night and just wait till the end and hand out your candy. What do you guys feel uh, what you would like to do? Would you like to wait till the end and hand them out? Okay. We'll use the honor system then and uh, keep track of your own candy count. And uh, when we get done, uh, we'll have maybe Talon will help us out and pass them out for you. So tonight's quiz is going to be in Psalms. Uh, chapters 125 through 150 and we got a fair amount of questions here so uh, I, uh, I think there might be an opportunity for everybody to candy out <laughs> uh, first question is in chapter 125 to what is the Lord surrounding his people compared to what is the Lord surrounding his people compared? Talon, I think I saw your hand first. That is correct. That is correct. The mountains around Jerusalem. Uh, question number two, chapter 20, 126. What will they that sow in tears reap? Oh boy, I think Sharon, I think you just beat Rick by just a tiny bit. <laughs> 
I'm sorry? That is correct, Joy. Question number three, still in 126. What will happen for he that goes forth weeping, bearing precious seed? Jeanette, I saw your hand. Correct. Rejoicing and bringing the sheaves with him. Okay. Question number four, chapter 127. When is our building in vain? Terry. That is correct. Except the Lord build it. Question number five, we're still in 127. What does God give his beloved? Terry. Sleep is correct. Question number six, what are a heritage of the Lord? Sharon. Children is correct. And one more here, question number seven in 127. To what are children compared? Talon. Jeanette. Talon again. That is correct. Yes. Arrows in the hand of a mighty man. Question number eight comes from chapter 130. From where did the psalmist cry unto God? Talon. Out of the depths is correct. Question number nine is also from 130. In what did the psalmist hope? Jeanette? Correct, in his word. Question number 10, skip over to up to chapter 133. What is good and pleasant? Terry. That is correct. Brethren, to dwell together in unity. Uh, chapter 135, question number 11. What endureth forever? Jan. Uh, it does, but that's not the answer for this one. Journey. That is correct. The name of the Lord. Question number 12, still in 135. From what are the idols of the heathen made? Journey? That is correct. Silver and gold. Question 136. What endures forever? I'm sorry, I did not see whose hand went up first. Uh, I'm going to pick Nick. That is correct, God's mercy. Question 14, still in 136. I'll try to do a better job of looking for the first hand. When did God remember us? Sharon. That is correct, in our low estate. Question 15 in chapter 137. Where was it hard to sing the Lord's song? Jeanette? Uh, it said, to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. In a strange land, that is correct. It was hard to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Question 16 is in 138. What has God magnified above his name? Sharon. His word is correct. He has magnified his word above his name. Question 17 is found in 139. In what manner has God made us? In what manner has God made us? That is correct. Fearfully and wonderfully are we made. 139, chapter 139. And we're still in 139 for question 18. What are great in number, what are greater in number than the sand of the sea? Was that a hand or? Yes. 
Uh, not in this verse here, not in this chapter. What are greater in number than the sand of the sea? Nick? That is correct. God's thoughts about us are greater than the number of the sand of the sea. His thoughts about us. Why did the psalmist want God to search him and know his heart? Same chapter, 139. Why did the psalmist want God to search him and know his heart? Journey? Correct. To find the wicked ways. Uh, next question, question 20, is in chapter 142. The psalmist could find no man to care for what? Nick? His soul, his soul is correct. The psalmist could find no man to care for his soul. Uh, 144, chapter 144. Like what are the days of man? Janet. That is correct. A shadow. The days of man are like a shadow. Uh, next question, 22, comes from chapter 145. The Lord is full of what? Lucy. Compassion is correct. The Lord is full of compassion. We have four, five more questions. Chapter 147, what is it good to do? Ashton. That is correct. Sing praise to God. Nice job, Ashton. Uh, 147 again. To what has the Lord given names? To what has the Lord given names? Journey? The stars is correct. The Lord has given name to the stars. Chapter 148. What is the key word of the psalm? Sharon? Praise. That is correct. Praise. Two more questions. Uh, chapter 149. In what does the Lord take pleasure? Yes, Lucy. In his people is correct. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. And final question is in chapter 150. Uh, this one may take a minute. How many times is the word praise used in Chapter 150. No, sir. Nick? No, sir. Sharon? No. Jeanette? No. No, sir. Talon? 13 is correct. 13. 13 times the word praise was used in chapter 150. So... Nice job. That was uh, the pastor's quiz. I can't take any credit for that. He printed it off before he left for me so that we would have it to, to uh, go by tonight. Um, so, Talon, do you mind taking care of the candy? So, if you don't mind, raise your hand and number of fingers representing the pieces of candy that you uh, have coming to you. And Talon will make his way around uh, with the candy. What's that? No. I think, do we have enough candy in there, Talon? I think we have some more if we need it. Okay. 
Don't forget Ashton all the way in the back. Ashton, did you have your hand up quite a few times and I missed you? Or I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but uh, I almost uh, didn't realize you were sitting back there. You sit up a little bit higher, so it's harder to see your hand. It's a tough job seeing those hands go up and which one is first, especially when you're reading the, trying to read the question. And uh, some of you guys are quick and raise your hand before the question's finished. So, all right. Did everybody get their candy? Thank you, Talon. Okay, so uh, with uh, tomorrow being Thanksgiving and this being the week of Thanksgiving, I thought it would uh, be nice to take a few minutes and uh, uh, talk about being thankful um, and just uh, some, uh, we have a few stories to uh, look at and uh, discuss and uh, you know just think about all the things that we had to be thankful for uh, hopefully uh, you've already spent some time this week as uh, the pastor uh, urged us to on Sunday thinking about things we're thankful for spending time with the Lord and just thanking him for how good he is to us and how well he takes care of us his blessings and uh, you know it, it's great uh, that we have the Thanksgiving holiday to uh, remind us uh, to take time out and be thankful for all those things that uh, God has uh, given us. Uh, we have the other holidays as well, like Christmas, uh, to remind us of Christ's birth, Easter, of the resurrection. And uh, it's good that we have these special times, and we look forward to them, and we uh, obviously we celebrate them uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, and it gets more of our attention around those times of the year. Uh, but... Um, what I would like us to think about is, you know, when it's a, a normal everyday week, like let's say the third week of January, when it's just the dead of winter, there's nothing going on, there's no real holidays coming up, you know, what, what's our spirit like? What is our attitude of gratitude? Are we thankful, uh, you know, just in the middle of the year when nothing's really going on? We don't have Thanksgiving to remind us uh, to be thankful, you know, what, what is our spirit like at those times when we don't have that reminder? Uh, am I, you know, ask myself, am I typically a thankful person towards God? Am I typically thankful towards other people? Uh, do I recognize the blessings of God in my life and do I thank him for them? Do I express my gratitude to others when they have done something kind for me or helped me in some way? Um, and when I do that, do I do I sincerely mean it, or do I just say, oh, thanks, you know, kind of half-heartedly, or, you know, as um, as uh, kind of going through the motions, like, oh, that's the thing to do, you know, when somebody does something for you, you say thanks, or do I sincerely mean it? Um, I feel like when I, uh, when I text with people, um, texting is very hard to get a feel for people's emotions and what, you know, what they really, uh, what their real feelings are, how their expressions are, what they're thinking. Are they mad? Are they sad? Are they glad? Are they happy? And that's one of the difficult things about texting and kind of one of my own personal pet peeves, I guess, that I have for myself. And I don't hold it against other people because I know everybody's different, but I feel like myself when I answer somebody back who's done something for me, I don't like to just send back thanks. I feel like it's being short and it, uh, you know, maybe kind of making light of what they've done. I like to say thank you. I mean, I feel like I've taken the extra time. It's another word, right? It takes you a little longer to type it in there. And I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's silly, but, you know, to me, I, I feel like I'm, you know, really expressing my gratitude towards them that I am thankful. And uh, that's just, you know, my own personal thing that I like to do. Um, uh, another question to ask ourselves about being thankful Am I a person who could probably show a little more gra gratitude uh, than what I do right now? Am I somebody who is not as thankful as I could be? Um, you know, is, uh, is that an area that I could probably work on doing a little bit better, whether it be thankful to other people, thankful to God, um, thankful to my family? Uh, is that something that I could work on? Do I sometimes take things for granted? Um, Am I too busy with my own uh, to-do list that I 
forget uh, about gratitude or saying thank you, and it's kind of the last thing on my mind. I'm, you know, that narrow focus, that laser focus on getting my task done, and I don't stop to thank the person that's helped me out or done something for me. I'm just, okay, that's done. You check it off the list and keep going on to the next thing. Um, do I take that time, uh, or am I just in too big of a hurry for myself? Many times, we have the best intentions of thanking people, but we do get caught up in our own world. We get caught up in our daily routine and, and doing the things that we know we need to get done for that day. And we certainly don't mean anything bad by it and have no, um, no uh, purpose of you know, being, doing someone wrong, but we uh, just simply, uh, simply forget. And uh, I've done that myself many times. You know, you'll, somebody will do something nice for you. I, I can think of uh, an example that I've done a few times, like when uh, the pastor uh, has pizza for us here like last week, you know. Um, I'll get home and I'll text him. I'll say, Pastor, did I say thank you for the pizza tonight? You know, and I, yeah, it's just pizza, but you know what? You know, he, he planned for it. He uh, made a point to order it and get it and pay for it and have it here and, you know, you know, in his heart, he was, you know, having a special treat for us, and, you know, and I, I, I don't want to miss saying thank you, so, you know, I've done that before. I'll get home and text him and say, hey, thank you for the pizza if I didn't tell you, and he's like, no, you told me, so that just shows that my memory is getting bad along with everything else, <laughs> so, you know, we do those kind of things, too, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, that happens to all of us. Um, like I said, tonight I'd like to just take a few minutes and look at three stories of thankful people in the Bible. Uh, the first one is uh, the story of Hannah and Samuel, and uh, you can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, we're going to read verse 10 and 11 to you, and it says there that, uh, And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow. And said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Hannah made a vow to the Lord. She was the uh, first of two wives of, um, of Elkanah, and uh, it's believed that she was married to him first, and then his second wife was Penina. I believe that's the proper way to say her name. And uh, from what I can understand, he married Penina because Hannah was not able to bear him children. And, you know, he wanted to have children. So uh, that was the reason he married Penina. Well, Penina knew this about Hannah. And uh, if you continue to read the story, we won't read the entire story uh, for time. But... Uh, she continually picked on Hannah. Every, every chance she got, uh, basically, from what I can gather, she picked on her that, you know, ha ha, you can't have kids, and I can. You can't, you can't provide your husband with a child, but I can. And, you know, just, you know, really, really uh, cut at her constantly. And, and it, as you would expect, it really bothered Hannah. Uh, Hannah wanted so badly to bear a child for her husband that she was willing to give him back to the Lord if he would give her a man-child. Uh, and that is where her vow comes in. She made that vow to, to the Lord. And if you think about it, that's, um, that's a pretty big vow to make because, you know, she's going to have very little time with that child. You know, we, uh, those of us that have kids, we know that the time just flies by. Um, it may not feel like it uh, when, at certain times, but when you look back, uh, that time just goes by so quickly. And, you know, the Bible says that once he was weaned, she took him up to, uh, to the priest, to Eli, to, uh, to give him to the Lord, as she had vowed to do. And uh, so that's, you know, once he's weaned, that's very little time. He's still a young boy at that point. Uh, so the time that she did have with him was very little time. Uh, but... Uh, verse 24 and 28 of the same chapter, we read, and it says, And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks, one ephah of flour, and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. 
Therefore also have I lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. She made a vow, and she, she followed through with it. She did what she said she would do to the Lord. And I, I, I can't imagine, you know, once you had that baby and you held it and you spent those years with it, raising it, and then it gets to the point where, it, you know, it's uh, walking and all that, and then she takes it up to the priest and turns over to not have him be at home living with her anymore, to be raised by somebody else. Uh, I know a mother's love is far stronger than a father's love for her children. Um, there's a connection there that the mother has that the father doesn't. So uh, I'm sure she was still breaking inside her heart, knowing that you know she was giving it to him, but she made a vow and she kept that vow. Um, after, but after she had given Samuel to the Lord, uh, she sang praises unto the Lord for his goodness to her. First uh, Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, it says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices, rejoiceth in the Lord, mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall be thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. This was... Uh, a song and a prayer that uh, she sang unto the Lord and uh, I think it shows that she, yeah she was maybe her heart was broken that she uh, had to take her son and give it to the priest like she had uh, committed but she's also had a joyful heart she was happy that the Lord heard her prayer heard her plea and blessed her with a child and gave her that time with it and she's singing her praise and her thankfulness to God for what he did for her uh, she uh, she could have chose to keep Samuel to herself and not followed through on her vow. Uh, she could have said, well, I've given birth to him, I've raised him, and I'm going to keep him now. I'm not giving him up. She could have done these things, but uh, we don't know how that would have turned out for her. I mean, maybe the Lord would have found his own way of taking Samuel from her. You know, maybe she wouldn't have liked the way he took him from her. So, uh, but she didn't do that. She chose to honor her vow and, and do as she had promised. Uh, do we sometimes ask God for something and then he gives it to us? Do we forget to thank him for it? Or do we do like uh, we had uh, talked about here? Maybe we refuse to, uh, to follow through. Um, certainly not something we want to do if we, you know, I know in some places the Bible talks about don't make a vow that you cannot keep. And especially to God, um, I know someday when we stand before him and he says, you remember that vow you made to me that one day? <laughs> and uh, I held up my end of the deal. And uh, if we didn't, uh, we will certainly be um, ashamed, embarrassed, and, and uh, among many other things. Um, I, don't, I don't know how we would answer to God for that. Um, but uh, she didn't do that. She did give them to him. Do we, uh, like I said, do we forget to thank him uh, for answering our request? Uh, sometimes it's easy to do. We, we uh, get, like we said earlier, we get busy with our own lives and doing our own things, and, and we forget uh, that God answered our prayer. And especially once the answer comes, we're so happy and so excited to see that it was answered. Uh, you know, then we get on that next, that next thought. You know, sometimes what, what's next on my list that I need to, I need help with. Um, I, I kind of like how the pal pastor challenges us many times. Uh, and 
I, I think everybody in here has probably heard him say it uh, at least once, if not uh, several times. When the Lord answers a prayer for us, we should spend as much time thanking him for answering our prayer as we spent asking him for it. Um, I had a, just a thought that I had on it, and it's uh, interesting, but could we apply Jesus' teaching here? Uh, Matthew 5, 41, and whatsoever shall compel, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Could we possibly thank God twice as much as we had asked him for uh, our prayer, as we requested him? I mean, I, I know he certainly wouldn't tire of the uh, the thank yous and the blessings and the praise, um, but just just a challenge, just a thought. Is that something that we could do? You know, he he does challenge us. If somebody says go a mile, go two, and I feel like Pastor put that challenge out there. You know, uh, you know we should thank him equally as many times as we asked him for something, and uh, I I think that's more than fair uh, for us. Uh, Hannah was truly thankful to God, and her walk and her talk showed it. Our uh, second story is about uh, someone that lived a life with a thankful spirit, uh, and was simp it was simply how he chose to live. Uh, the story of Daniel, Daniel praying to his God in chapter uh, 6. Uh, if you want to turn your Bibles there, Daniel chapter 6, and we'll just read just a, a few of the verses. We're not going to go through the whole story, but... Um, it talks about uh, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was the first so Daniel's the top guy that the princes might give account unto them and the king should have no damage then this Daniel was preferred above the princes excuse me the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together, which I think might be a lie. I don't know that they asked Daniel. I'm suspecting they probably didn't include him. Uh, but they have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. The presidents and the princes, they did everything they could to come up with something bad to say about Daniel, something that they could basically uh, make him look bad in the eyes of the king. They were jealous. Uh, the king preferred him. Uh, as the Bible says there, an excellent spirit was in him. Uh, they were jealous of how much the king liked Daniel and cared for him, and so they were trying to you know, dig up whatever dirt they could on him. Uh, unlike today's uh, politicians, uh, who have plenty of dirt that seems to come out when it's election time, uh, I kind of look at this passage as election time, if you will. They were, you know, getting presidents and uh, princes and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, they were probably looking to do whatever they could to make the other one look bad. And uh, they were not able to find anything about Daniel. So uh, knowing his excellent spirit, knowing his routine and how he prayed to God every day, uh, they decided to attack him from that angle. Let's attack him through his God, knowing how uh, faithful he is to his God, how he worships and, and prays to and thanks his God. Let's, let's get him that way. And so they came together, and in verse 10 it says he did aforetime. Uh, Daniel did this every day, and uh, that's what they used against him. Uh, 
I'd like to uh, also point out that the Bible said uh, not only did he pray, but he also gave thanks three times a day. Um, he went uh, he went there and he prayed, had his window open so that the people could you know see in if they wanted to. They'd look in and see him. And as he was praying, he would also thank his God uh, for all that he had done for him. And uh, I don't believe that they were referring to Daniel praying over his breakfast, lunch, and dinner three times a day. You know, oh, thank you, Lord, for this food. I, I don't, I don't think that's what they were witnessing. I, I think he had an actual prayer time that three times a day that he uh, went before God and spent time alone with God. And uh, you know, as you know, there's nothing wrong with praying for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we ought to do that. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very confident that Daniel did this, but you know, how often do we give thanks to God? Uh, do we do it three times a day, two times a day, just once a day do we thank God? Oh, thank you, Lord, for this day. You know, you gave us a beautiful day today. How many times do we stop and thank God uh, for, again, for his mercy and for the wonderful blessings that he's given us in our life? Um, he certainly uh, d deserves more than once a day, uh, more than three times a day. We, uh, uh, we should try to strive to thank him continually, uh, the Bible says. Uh, we should be constantly thanking him you know, for the things that he does in our lives. Uh, he watches over us, he provides for us, he takes care of us, he meets our needs, he, uh, he's given us his word, uh, the instructions for how we should live, how we should uh, serve him. And so there is really, uh, there's no reason why we can't be thanking him throughout our day. Uh, I've been really uh, trying hard uh, to, to do better at this myself lately. And, uh, you know, it, it is difficult sometimes, but even the littlest things, I think God appreciates the thanks for. Uh, I, I had a job the other day that I was working on, and uh, I was having a tough time uh, getting the post to line up on the rail. And I was getting frustrated, so I just said, I'm just done tonight. And I cleaned up and went home. And the next day, uh, on the way there, I prayed about it and asked, asked God to just help me with it. And, and I got there, and the post just lined right up like they needed to. Things fell into place. And I just, I, you know, I mean, thank you, Lord. I mean, I know it's nothing to him. It's just a, a materialistic thing it's a it's a deck for a customer and means nothing to the lord but it it really made my day easier and it, it meant a lot to me and and i wanted to thank him for it it was something that uh you know deserved thanks you know it, it wasn't a big thing but it was it was something that he had done for me and uh i think we should take the time for those little things just as much as we do for the big things to to thank the lord you know, you're in a hurry trying to get somewhere, you're running late for an appointment, and you got that light ahead, and you're like, I never make this light, I never make it. Please, Lord, let me make this light. And although it's only, what, 30 seconds, a minute, depending on the light you get stuck at, but you know what, you make it through that, you say, thank you, Lord, I needed those few extra minutes, just as, as few as they are, I, I need those minutes. You know, so just, you know, throughout our day, let's, let's be thanking him for uh, the things that he does for us. Uh, like I said, I, I'm sure Daniel, Daniel continually thanked God throughout his day. Uh, we have another example of this earlier in Daniel chapter 2, uh, verse 23. It says, uh, Daniel says, I, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. So this, just to refresh your memory a little bit, we'll go back and we're talking about the dream that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had, and it couldn't be figured out, and he didn't understand the meaning of it. And so Daniel uh, has prayed to God and asked him to reveal the uh, dream to him. So this is Daniel thanking uh, the Lord for showing him the king's dream. And then in verse 27 and 28, uh, Daniel uh, before uh, revealing to the king what the dream meant, he takes a minute and gives glory to God. And basically, he thanks God again for, for answering his prayer, for showing him the king's matter. And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, 
The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And Daniel goes on to explain to him. So before Daniel even uh, gets into telling the king what his dream was about, he, uh, he makes certain to give the praise to God and thanks God for showing him that answer and makes the king uh, certain and aware that uh, it was all God. It wasn't Daniel. It wasn't Daniel that you know, figured out what the dream meant and what it was about. It was uh, Daniel's God that did that for him. And uh, he, want, he wanted to make sure that he gave God the glory, the praise, and the credit for it. Uh, Psalms 100, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto men, excuse me, be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth through all generations. Doesn't this psalm sound like uh, the description of a man with a, uh, an excellent spirit, like we read about earlier about Daniel? Uh, all these things kind of describe how Daniel's heart was towards the Lord and his, his praise and singing of him. Uh, Daniel was a man... Uh, even as the king recognized with an with a excellent spirit. Uh, Daniel was truly thankful to God, and his walk and his talk showed it. Our last story is the uh, story of Jesus healing the ten lepers. Uh, we can find that in Luke chapter 17, uh, verses 11 through 19. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But there are the nine, but where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. When Jesus came into the village, the men came to him. He didn't seek them out. They came looking for him, these ten men with leprosy. Uh, as we read there, they were standing afar off as uh, the people in those times that had leprosy uh, had to do, kind of like the uh, quarantine we're going through now with uh, this COVID. Uh, they had to be quarantined, if you will. They had to be uh, separated from the general population because of their leprosy. And uh, the, it was uh, basically a skin disease that they had, and they were forbidden to come in contact with people who did not have the, the disease and if uh, someone was to approach them uh, that did not have the leprosy they had to you know very loudly clearly make them aware that they were unclean and even I believe shout unclean unclean you know let the people know that they had leprosy so these people were you know off off in the alley, if you will, in town. They weren't just sitting there on the, you know, right on the main street when Jesus walked in, but they saw him coming. They may have even had prior knowledge that he was coming. I, I imagine back then there was probably a little talk. Oh, Jesus is coming to town. Did you hear about that, Jesus? He's coming here. And uh, so, you know, they, uh, the men were, they were up on their current affairs. They knew who Jesus was. And when they saw him, they knew that uh, he could help them with their problem. Uh, they went to him, pleading him for mercy. They didn't just say, hey, Jesus, can you, can you fix us? We hear that you can fix people. Can you fix us? It says they were pleading with him for mercy. Uh, they, uh, they knew that he was the one that could heal them, that could fix their, uh, their leprosy. Uh, why else would they have come to him? They weren't looking for money. 
um, if you think about it, uh, uh, they had the furthest thing from a normal life. I'm sure they couldn't be around family, couldn't be around friends, probably didn't have any. The only friends they had were probably the other, other people that had leprosy. So, you know, they couldn't uh, go and do the things that a normal person uh, without leprosy did. So uh, they weren't interested in uh, worldly things. I'm sure they weren't interested in money and, and all those kind of things or a nice house or anything. They, they wanted to have their health back. And uh, so that's what they went to Jesus for. And it says, uh, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So the, uh, if you remember, um, in the Old Testament, when uh, folks had leprosy, the priest was the one who had to uh, certify, if you will, or give the okay that the, the leper was clean and was uh, allowed to enter back into the general population uh, because the leprosy was gone. So that was the reason that Jesus had told them, go to the priest. You know, you're clean, you're healthy, go to the priest, and then you will be able to have your, you know, have a normal life. So uh, one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Just a couple of thoughts that I had that I asked myself while I was looking at this. Uh, why, uh, why didn't the other nine come back and glorify God and thank Jesus for healing them and you know taking away their leprosy? You know, ten people and only one comes back. That those are terrible percentages. Ten percent, one person. So why didn't the other people? Is there, you know, why? What was it that kept them from going back? Uh, just a couple, like I said, a couple thoughts that I had about it, and they're just thoughts of my own. I, I don't know, you know, if they're true or not. I, I have no idea. We have no way of knowing. But were they just so surprised by Jesus healing them that they completely forgot their manners? They're just in total shock and disbelief that they're all of a sudden completely healed and clean? You know, go from an outcast to uh, on the verge of being a normal person, having a normal life, and no more leprosy? You know, were they just in such uh, shock and surprise that they just didn't know what to do, which way was up? You know, is, is that what happened to them? They just didn't really full eyes. You know, you ever been in one of those situations where something happened and you just couldn't believe that it was actually happening? I think Jeanette had a, a day like that on Monday when she walked into the office and there's Josh. I don't think she, I don't think she knew what was happening. She didn't even know who it was at first. Like, is that Josh? And, you know, maybe these guys were the same way. Like, what just happened? How, how am I clean? How did this happen? Um, were they just in such a hurry uh, to go and show themselves to the priests, get that clean bill of health, uh, so as they were instructed by Jesus, so that they could, um, you know, totally get on with the rest of their lives, you know? Did they just, you know, oh, I got to get to the priest. Jesus told me to go to the priest. I got to go to the priest. And then they just take off, you know, heading right for that priest and just totally forget, oh man, I didn't even thank him. I didn't even think about it. Um, I gotta go see the priest. And then I gotta go find my parents and tell my parents and say, look, look, I'm, I'm better. You know, and, and other family members and, and things like that. And you know, I'm, I'm sure they had a list a mile long and running through their head of all the things that they can do now that they weren't able to do before. And uh, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us what happened. It doesn't tell us why they didn't give thanks. Uh, like the one man did, but um, I'm sure there was a reason for it. Um, regardless of what the reason was, um, there's really no excuse for the ingratitude, and, and we can apply that to ourselves too. There's, there's no excuse for not taking the time uh, to show our gratitude, to thank, to thank God, to thank others for things that they do for us. Um, we read over and over again throughout the Bible how God is good, his mercy endureth forever. We are instructed many times throughout the Bible to give thanks. Um, and, uh, you know, these, these guys missed it. One guy out of ten got it. Uh, in all three of our stories, God continued to bless each of these individuals for giving him the glory and the praise for their thankful hearts towards him, for their, their spirit that they had. Each, each person had a, a good spirit. There, there was no bitterness like, 
like Hannah, oh man, I, I, that's right, I told God, I, I vowed I'd give him this baby, so now I gotta give this baby to him. And you know, there was no bitterness or anything. They all had the, the, uh, the good spirit and the good heart uh, towards God, and they were thankful for him. Each one uh, had a continued blessing in God's mercy on them. Uh, Hannah, uh, back in Samuel 2.21, it says, And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. The Lord continued to bless Hannah. If you remember when we first read the beginning there, she was barren. She couldn't. Uh, that was the reason that her husband ended up with a second wife is because she was not able to give him children. And the Lord uh, worked a miracle and gave her her son Samuel. And I believe because she honored her vow and she had the right heart, the right spirit, God continued to, to touch her life, continued to bless her. And honestly, he blessed her abundantly above what she probably could have ever hoped or dreamed. She probably never had a thought in her head of, you know, God giving her more, more children. And he gave her five more, five more children. And I, and I, I honestly believe it was because of her, her thankfulness and her thankful heart and the spirit that she had. Uh, Daniel, we didn't finish the story of Daniel's failure to obey the royal decree, but uh, everyone in here is very familiar with that story as well. As you know, he was thrown in the lion's den. Uh, they put him in with the lions to be eaten up, and he stayed in there all night long. It wasn't like he got thrown in there, he ran around the thing and came running back out. He was in there all night long, and God delivered him. I, I don't know about you, I think that's a huge blessing and uh, I'm sure that Daniel thanked him for a long time for that one <laughs> because uh, obviously he spared his life. Uh, I, I would not want to be in a cage with lions for even one minute. <laughs> and he spent the whole night, you know, again, his spirit and his thankfulness, God blessed him for it. This uh, man with the leprosy uh, came back and Jesus saved him. Luke uh, 15, uh, 19, they were all healed but when the one man came back, Jesus asked him where the other nine were, and uh, they did not come back. This man came back to give God the glory, and Jesus gave the man not only cleansing from the leprosy, he gave this man salvation, eternal life. What better gift uh, than that? Um, Thy faith hath made thee whole is... Uh, is the exact words there that uh, Jesus used in verse 19. He says, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So if you, if you remember, we look back in there, he said all of them were healed. Um, but this is the only man that he tells him that your faith has made you whole. And we know that that, uh, that is salvation. Our faith makes us whole uh, when we accept Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And the Lord Jesus gave this man, eternal life, uh, the greatest blessing of all when he came back to thank him uh, for healing him of his leprosy. So that man not only had his physical uh, needs met, but he had his spiritual needs uh, met as well. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we need to remember that uh, uh, we thank God. Um, we don't do it just so that he'll continue to bless us like he did in these uh, three examples here. We don't want to, you know, well, I, I better thank God, you know, if I want him to continue to bless me. We, we don't want to have the wrong heart. You know, God knows our heart. He knows uh, our thoughts and our motives and why we do things. Um, although we certainly do want to have his blessings on us and uh, continue to receive uh, the answers to our prayers, uh, we don't want to just say thank you to get what we want. Um, just a, a few verses that uh, talked about uh, thankfulness and being thankful. Uh, Psalms 106.1, praise you the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 107.1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 3, 15 through 17, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you, in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Philemon 1, 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. A lot of these verses talk about being thankful for other people and thinking of them in our prayers. And that's another way that we can thank others by praying for them. And God sees that and hears it. Um, I have one last verse here. I'll, I'll give you 1 Thessalonians 5.18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Have you ever stopped and thought about this verse and uh, what it actually says? I know we uh, a lot of times we hear the very first part of it, and everything give thanks. We, uh, we hear that, that part of the verse quite often. And a lot of times we think about good things, you know, giving thanks in good times and bad times, when we have good things come into our lives, when we have bad things come into our lives. And uh, the first part of, our, of that verse seems to get the most focus. I wanted to look at the second part a little closer. It said, for this is the will of God for you. We as Christians should want to be in God's will for our lives. If we are not giving God thanks, according to this verse, then we are not in his will for us. I'll read it one more time. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's, it's his will for us to give thanks. He, he expects us to do that. It's his will for us. And if we don't do that, then we're not in God's will. Uh, as God's children, we are instructed throughout the Bible to be thankful to God for all that he has done for us, the good and the bad. Looking back on the, the bad things that I've had happen in my life, I can honestly say at the time that they were happening and I was going through them, I, I didn't say thank you for them. And uh, this verse tells us everything give thanks. Uh, but now looking back, I do give thanks to God for those times because it, uh, uh, it showed me what God was able to do for me in those times that I couldn't do for myself and I couldn't solve the problem. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't have the answers, and God did. And now I can say thank you, God, for taking me through those times because, you know, he, he's the one that did it. And uh, I know it's not exactly the timing that I should have had for being thankful, but, um, you know, we're supposed to thank God for those times even when we're going through them. And uh, as a Christian, it, you know, it helps us grow. It helps us put faith in God to bring us through it and not ourselves. Uh, it was his will for me to go through those difficult times and those challenges and obstacles and testings. And this verse tells us that, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It was his will for me to have those things. Uh, we need to be thankful to each other. Uh, what better way to lift someone up, to boost their spirits, than to show gratitude to them, to thank them um, for the things that they've done for you or something you know that they have helped you with or whatever. I know it, uh, um, it really makes me feel good when I'm able to help somebody. And I'm not doing it for the thank you, but when a person genuinely thanks you, it makes you feel good to know that you were a help to them and that you were able to uh, help them out with something. Uh, I think we have some great examples here, and these obviously are just a few of uh, uh, some people that we can learn to have a thankful spirit, a thankful heart from, uh, and, and uh, we need to uh, you know, try to think about it. Uh, regardless of our situation, our circumstances, we need to be thankful. Um, can we thank God more often than we do right now? Uh, I don't know where anybody's at in this room except for myself with my thankfulness, so um, it's just uh, a challenge to throw out there. You know where you're at in, in your heart. You know, but is there room to be just a little bit more thankful? And is it something we can do each day, not just Thanksgiving week, Thanksgiving day, something that we can add to our lives to, to better serve God, to better uh, be in his will, and to draw us closer to him? 
Um, I, uh, I'm thankful for the time that I had s to study and uh, prepare tonight. Uh, when the pastor asked me, uh, the first thought in my head was, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, I don't really care to get up in front of people. I've been through Dale Carnegie, and uh, I've taken all those classes, and uh, I've, I've done that. And it, it's one of those things you say it's in the books, but um, I, I'm not a person who desires to be up in front of people and talk, but uh, the Lord just said you, you need to, to do it. And I'm, I'm very thankful that he just in that small, still voice quickly spoke to me and said, just do it. And uh, it's really taught me a lot of things uh, by studying uh, for this evening. Uh, does anybody in the room have uh, something they want to share that they're thankful for? That, you know, you don't have to. If nobody does, we'll go right into uh, doing our offering announcements. But um, with tomorrow being Thanksgiving, I just wanted to give, uh, give you all the opportunity if somebody wanted to share something that they're thankful for. It doesn't have to be towards God or whatnot, but just thankfulness. Yes, Rick. Lord. Uh, Alan? Well, that's great. I'm sure you're you're ready and anxious to provide your own transportation, right? <laughs> and it'll come. It just won't come soon enough, right? <laughs> uh, anybody else? Amen. Amen. We do have a, a, a great family here, and it is family. Everybody helps each other. And if there's anybody here that doesn't like somebody, I don't know it. I'm not aware of it. And I, I don't think there is. But if there is, I don't know it. Everybody just gets along so well. Everybody helps each other and takes care of each other. Um, and uh, there's so many of you that do so much that many people don't even know about. And uh, it's what keeps this church going. And like I said, I'm thankful for the pastor and his family. They came here and started this with nothing. And uh, they've poured their lives into it. And uh, very thankful for that. It is uh, definitely God's work for it to, to continue to grow and, and sustain here in Flint when other things are dying off. Anybody else? Terry? Amen. It is true, like we talked about in the, the middle story there with, or the last story with the lepers. <laughs> Your health is very important, and uh, good health is is a huge blessing for sure. And it's good. Everything's good. I'm happy for you, Terry. Yes, Janet. He always, he always comes through, even when we don't know we need him to, doesn't he? Amen. I don't want to dig for people to uh, say anything, but if everybody, if everybody has had a chance, um, we can take offerings. Is there any, you know, one last call? Anybody else? Okay, if we can get a couple of ushers, we'll uh, take up an offering.
And uh, while they do the offering, we will uh, go over the announcements. Brother Rick, would you mind praying for the offering? Okay, uh, just a few announcements uh, for you. Uh, December 4th and 5th, the ladies' conference. For those of you who signed up for that, I don't know if it's too late to sign up or not. Does anybody know? Is there still time? Yeah. Was today the last day? Okay. Okay, they're going to turn in. So the board is still over there. I saw it on the table. So if you haven't had a chance to sign up, uh, tonight would be the last night for you. Uh, that's for December 4th and 5th. And I know it's a really great time. Um, my wife goes pretty much every year, and I know the ladies have a, a really nice time. So uh, if you can make that at all, I highly recommend it. Uh, December 12th is the Christmas party, and it will be downstairs from what I understand. And uh, there's a couple of different uh, things in the planning for that, but uh, uh, plan on attending that. And if it's something you're not comfortable with, with the COVID and the current uh, situation the way things are certainly you know don't uh, do something you're not comfortable with but uh, obviously as always we'll uh, take all precautions that we can to be as safe and careful as we can with everything so uh, that's on December 12th and I'm sure they'll have a time for you here real soon and that uh, December 20th is the uh, happy birthday Jesus offering uh, they uh, like to take a, a offering for Jesus for his birthday the Sunday before Christmas. So that'll be December 20th. Uh, let's see here. Last week we did hit budget. Uh, we surpassed budget with a budget of 3500 We had $4,114.64 come in. So uh, uh, praise the Lord, we exceeded our budget last week. Uh, remember, there is no uh, visitation tomorrow because of Thanksgiving, so we will not have that tomorrow. If you come up here tomorrow for that, you'll be going out alone. And then uh, this week's Bible reading, beginners are reading Psalm 111 through 135, and then the advanced readers are reading the book of Luke and the book of John. And then last but not least, uh, this week's prayer emphasis is uh, strengthen our church family's faith. So... Uh, Oh, yes. So uh, that is our prayer emphasis this week, uh, 10 minutes. I'll be praying for your church family's faith. And uh, last announcement that uh, Jeanette just remind me of, uh, the uh, gift baskets that we're trying to put together for the uh, military men, uh, the three of them, Josh, Ben, and Tyler. Uh, we're going to try to uh, get that uh, squared away here in the next week or so so that we can get it in the mail and get it out to them uh, for Christmas. Um, you know how it gets this time of year with the mail and everything. Everything gets really, really busy. So I'd like to get it together and get on. Just let them know we're thinking of them uh, during Christmas. Yes, Sharon? Um, probably, I'm trying to think what the dates are, 12. Probably, probably by uh, Sunday the 6th. Sunday the 6th, that should give us enough time to get in the mail that week and get it out. So December 6th, let's make that the, the cutoff. And then that way uh, we can get it out. I, I had a, I was trying to think of the dates in my head. We had a postcard come from the mail the other day telling me what dates to send things out, depending on what type of priority mail you're sending and when you need to send it by. And, um, so I, I think that'll keep us in the safe zone and hopefully still get it to them uh, in time. So uh, any other uh, questions or concerns? All right, let's uh, pray and we can uh, be dismissed. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, thank you for this evening tonight. Thank you for uh, meeting with us here. Thank you for all those that came out on a, a cold, rainy uh, night in November. Uh, we are thankful for our pastor, Lord. Thank you for uh, him having some time to get away, him and his family, and, and enjoy themselves. We pray, that, again, that you'd keep them safe when they come back. 
pray that you'd be with each one here tonight as they head home. Uh, give them a safe trip and give each and every one of our uh, church family a, a great Thanksgiving day tomorrow, uh, some time with family, with friends, uh, enjoy some food, and, and then also just spend some time along with you and, and thanking you for your goodness. Please uh, be with us as we go home. Watch over us. Keep us safe. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.